So today we're going to be doing implicit partial differentiation and independent variables. We're going to do two questions and we're going to do each question with two methods. One will be implicit differentiation and the other one will be with the chain rule. And we're going to see this question one is slightly easier than question two because it tells us that z is a function of x and y and from that therefore we know that z is the dependent variable and therefore x and y are the independent variables which makes the partial differentiation slightly easier. One thing that we can say immediately is as x and y are independent variables therefore the partial derivative of x with respect to y because they're independent by definition that equals zero and that's going to help us. Okay, so what we've got to do is we need to find df dy uh, on this equation here. So let's go. So what we're going to do is remember x is fixed because we are differentiating partially with respect to y and we keep the other independent variables fixed, i.e. x. So we can treat x as a constant. So we will differentiate implicitly. And when we see a z, we're going to differentiate with respect to z and then multiply by dz dy. And when we see a y, we're just going to differentiate as per normal. So let's go. We have uh, x cubed times 5z to the 4. That's differentiating implicitly with respect to z. So therefore, we have to now multiply by dz dy minus and now this one here because y and z we have to differentiate them both we have to use the product rule so that will be differentiating the y first will be 2y times z cubed add y squared times differentiating z cubed with respect to z first 3z squared times dz dy that's differentiating implicitly and then finally here again we're treating x as a constant remember we're partially differentiating with respect to y and so therefore that is basically just minus 3x equals zero and all we need to do now is just tidy all of this lot up and collect the uh, dz dy's together so we have 5x cubed z to the 4 minus 3 y squared z squared dz dy equals 2yz cubed add 3x. And remember, because z is f of xy, the partial derivative of f with respect to y is the same as the partial derivative of z with respect to y, because z is f. So basically, we could replace that if we wanted to by df dy, which we should have done, really, I suppose. Um, so equals that. So therefore, df dy, which is dz dy, equals... 2yz cubed add 3x over 5x cubed z to the 4 minus 3y squared z squared. And that is the answer to the question. Now, this is the easiest of the four methods that we're going to do. OK, now, what we're going to do is we're going to do this using another method. What we're going to do, so let's just have a look here. So we've got uh, x cubed z uh, to the 5, what was it, uh, minus y squared z cubed minus 3xy equals 1. Was that right? Let's have a look. Uh, yes, it is, right? Okay, so let's let this equal w. So we have that w equals x cubed z to the 5 minus y squared z cubed minus 3xy. And we know that that equals 1. So we know that w is some function of x, y, and z, where we're already told that z is a function of x and y. We're told that in the question. Okay, we know that w equals 1 because we've defined it. So therefore, dw, d, anything, doesn't matter what we're partially differentiating double w with respect to, it's going to be equal to 0 because w, we defined it as being a constant. So therefore, the rate of change of w with respect to anything is zero. And therefore, what we can use is the chain rule. We can say, well, dw dy, in this case dy, because we're looking for df dy, we know it equals zero because dw d anything is equal to zero. And by the chain rule, we know that that is, given that w is a function of x, y, and z, equals dw dx by the chain rule, dx dy, add dw dy, dy dy, and we'll come back to these in a minute, add dw dz dz dy 
Okay, now as x and y are independent variables, which you've already established before, we know that dx dy must equal zero because they're independent, so one doesn't uh, depend on the other one. So therefore we know that this here is equal to zero. dy dy obviously is just equal to one, and we don't really need to put that, but it's just for completion. Uh, and dz dy, that is equal to df dy because z is equal to f of uh, x and y and therefore we can clean all this up to being equal to zero equals okay well dw dy let's just get w back in so w is here so dw dy all we need to do now is partially differentiate this with respect to y and dw dy is equal to minus 2y z cube that's differentiating that one minus 3x times by uh, dy dy, which is 1. So that is that bit there. Add dw dz now. Again, we need to now partially differentiate w with respect to z, which is 5z to the 4x cubed minus 3y squared z squared times by df dy. And that, those two partial differentiations here and here were, were much simpler than the implicit differentiation because we just defined W as being that. And all we have to do is just partially differentiate with respect to Y and respect to Z. And now all we need to do is just solve this. Well, DF DY equals, moving it all over to the side, 2YZ cubed, add 3X, that's that, over 5Z to the 4, X cubed, minus 3Y squared, Z squared, which is exactly the same as we got here. So the two methods work. Personally, I prefer the chain rule method where we define this as being a function which is equal to a constant because the I find the differentiation is just a little bit easier. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another one. So this is question two, let's have a quick look at that. Now this one, um, we're not told which one the independent and dependent variables are. We're given no information, and they clearly are all, all three of them. So we have here all three, x, y, and z. Which one is dependent on which other one? So what we need to do is we need to declare, well, this one here always, because they're asking us for the rate of change of x with respect to y, we just declare that x is going to be our dependent variable because that is the one that we are trying to find the rate of change of with respect to something else. And so therefore... y and z are the independent variables. We just declare it to be thus, and then basically we carry on as we did in question number one, which means as y and z are independent variables, therefore we know that dz dy equals zero because z does not depend on y, they're both independent. And uh, we have also declared that x is a function of y and z, which it is here. I mean, all of them are a function of the other. We can declare one of them as being a function of the other two. It doesn't matter which one we declare, but we have declared x is the dependent, so therefore x is a function of y and z. Okay, so now what we can do is, again, pretty much exactly the same um, as we did in question one. We want to find dx dy. So basically what we will do, as there are two independent variables, y and z, we are partially differentiating with respect to y, keeping z fixed. And so therefore, what we're going to do is implicit differentiation. Remember, z is fixed, so it's exactly the same here. We're differentiating, so that would be 2x. We're differentiating with respect to y, remember, so that would be 2x dx dy, y squared, add, we're using the product rule on this, add x squared times 2y, add and again here all we need to do we're differentiating with respect to y and remember z is a constant here because we've declared z to be one of the independent variables so that's 2y z squared and then here again we've got z as being the uh, constant so we're differentiating with respect to y so that will be add 2x times dx dy implicit differentiation times z squared equals zero and all we need to do now is just connect up our dx dy's. And so we have that dx dy 
uh, times by 2xy squared add 2xz squared equals minus 2yz squared add 2x squared y. And so therefore we have that dx dy is equal to the partial derivative of x with respect to y is minus y x squared add z squared over x y squared add z squared and that is the partial derivative dx dy so that's using method one and all we're going to do now is let's use method two which again will, will begin to become familiar now so x squared y squared add y squared z squared add z squared x squared equals zero so let's let w equal x squared y squared add y squared z squared add z squared x squared which equals zero which is therefore a function of x y and z and we know therefore that because w is a constant we know that dw d anything is equal to zero because it's a constant and we want to find dw dy um, which we know is equal to zero and by the chain rule that is equal to dw dx times dx dy add this is a similar uh, well in fact it's exactly the same formula that we wrote in question one dw dy 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 add dw dz dz dy um, and as before we know basically here is our w and we are finding with respect to y and we know therefore that the others is a constant so that gives us 0 equals 2xy squared add 2xz squared dx dy add 2yx squared add 2yz squared times 1 so that's just going across this formula here add dw dz times zero because we know that dz dy is zero because z and y are independent variables and so therefore we have uh, dx dy equals minus y x squared add z squared over x y squared add z squared exactly the same as we had previously Okay, so the only difference between these two questions is in this second question, they don't tell you which one the dependent variable is and which one the independent variables are. And so basically, depending on what we are looking for here, so for example, if we were looking for dz dx, well, we would declare z as the dependent variable and therefore x and y as the independent variables and therefore dx uh, sorry dy dx would equal zero because x and y are independent we go through exactly the same thing if we were looking for dy dz we would declare y as the dependent and z and x as the independent and go through exactly the same okay well i hope this has clarified some stuff if it has uh, please um, like the video by pressing the little thumbs up button and subscribe to the gresty academy youtube channel